Just a couple of scriptures I want to read, just an opening. And then I want to sing a chorus before I jump right into it. Deuteronomy 31.6, the good Old Testament. It says, be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. Psalm 32, starting at verse 7. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusts in the Lord, mercy, shall compass, compass him about. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy for all that are upright in heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. But he's going to protect us wherever we go. Amen. When we make up our mind and we decide, God, I'm going to do what you called me to do. I'm going to go out and preach your gospel. God's going to go with us, and we're going to have his protection. Somebody say protection. Somebody say God's protection is in my life. Hallelujah. Somebody say God's protection is over my life right now. Hallelujah. I want to proclaim that today and deliver that word into your heart today and receive it. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Before I jump right in, I'm not going to be very long today, but I just want to sing this one more praise unto the Lord. If you know it, you can sing it with me. It says, I'm falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Falling in love. With Jesus, falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus is the best thing. Sing it with me. Oh, falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus is the best.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on and love him right now all over the place. Lord, we love you, God, because you first loved us. Thank you, Lord. I feel your protecting arms all around me today. I feel your protection, Jesus, round about me, God, and I give you praise. Hallelujah, Lord. I walk in confidence, Lord, knowing that you're with me, Jesus. Lord, minister your word to every heart today, God, I pray you would move in this house in a mighty way, God. Oh, move in this place in a mighty way. Everybody said in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated today. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Lord, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. We don't have to fear what tomorrow holds. Amen. We don't have to fear what the future holds because I know the one who holds the future. Hallelujah. I said we know the one who holds the future. Amen. We're living in a world today that is full of uncertainty, full of anxiety. There's people that are stressing out all over the place. It's a world today of distrust, a world today of people living in fear, just to name a few of the negatives. They're living in worry. They always, they're always doubting. There's uneasiness. There's people living in paranoia. It's running rampant all over the place. And it's adversely affecting lives and tormenting the minds of millions of people today, even in this Bay Area, amen, especially in this Bay Area. The human race is in pursuit with unrelenting efforts to find protection against everything from identity theft to credit fraud to cyber attacks to home invasion. It's happening today to even nuclear war. People all over the place living in fear. Desperately, hopelessly, they search for any kind of security that they could find, desiring a safe place of escape and some peace of mind from the evils that lie await. I'm sure we know somebody that's like that, and many of us have been that way before we found Jesus. But I'm glad to proclaim today that there is such a place of protection and safety I'm here today to let someone know that, yes, there is a peace that passes all understanding. Amen. That, yes, there is a great protector that makes his throne in the heavens and is able to keep us as his own. He is the good shepherd that watches over his sheep. Hallelujah. Anybody want to be a sheep today? He's the good shepherd that watches over you and me. Bible says he's a shelter from the storm. He's a shield that covers from the fiery darts of the wicked. He's a hiding place that preserves from trouble. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. The almighty God, creator of all things. And he loves his children. That's you and me. And he watches over us with great carefulness and mindfulness. Hallelujah. And you said amen. Thank you, Jesus. It's the protection of God that is like no other. Much greater than any other. More powerful than anything we will ever encounter. Covers more lives than anything out there and is available to whosoever will. Thank you, Jesus. I want to talk about this Jesus. He's the great protector, amen. Somebody said, he's the great protector over my life. I like to give definitions of a word in case 
someone never heard it like this before, but definition of protector, the person or thing that protects someone or something. You ever, you have anything in your life that you're very protective of? Of course, your wife, your family, your kids, you're protective of them. Amen. You don't want nothing, no harm to come to them. Hallelujah. When you see them distraught and going through something, you want to be a protector. Amen. Over your kids, over your dogs, your animals, your cats, your snakes, whatever you're, you're into. <laughs> Praise God. You're a protector. You guard those things. Protector is one that protects, a guardian. When I'm in his arms, the song says, when I'm in his arms, I feel protected. Protection, the state of being kept from harm, loss, etc. The state of being protected. Something that keeps a person or thing from being harmed. The act of protecting, the state of being protected. God is protecting his church in this hour, in this time, and he's calling us to do a great work. That he's not going to send us out on our own, but he's going to walk and be with us and empower us to do what he's called us to do. What does the word of God say about protection today? Many scriptures that come to mind, I'm sure you're thinking of one right now. There are many promises and examples of physical protection in the Word of God, both the Old Testament and the New Testament. God promised protection to the Israelites against the nations who would come against them as they entered the promised land. How many know the story of the Israelites, God's people? The Bible says in Deuteronomy 33 that the eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heavens shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee. They had God's protection. God had their back, amen. O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency. And thine enemies shall be found liars under thee, and shalt tread upon their high places. God's protection over the Israelites, his people, amen. Exodus 23 says, I will send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion all the people among whom you come. Boy, those, those armies that went up against Israel, they, didn't, they weren't fighting a fair fight, were they? <laughs> God had the Israelites back. As we read all throughout the Old Testament, he said, I will send my terror ahead of you, Israelites, Throw into confusion all the people who come against you. And I will make all of your enemies turn their backs to you. God was fighting their battles. He was fighting the battles for his people. Exodus 23. I will send my terror ahead of you and create panic among all the people whose lands you invade. I will make all your enemies turn and run. Here we see in these, just these couple scriptures, God protecting those whose actions were in accordance to his foreordained plans and purpose. When we walk in God's plan and we live in his purpose, his protection will be on us. Amen, new life. I said his protection will be upon us. There are many, many stories in the Old Testament that are just powerful and a lot of old prophets of old that are fun to read about and many great stories. 
What I want to talk about today is prophet by the name of Elisha. I know that most of us are, know his story, how that he was he followed under Elijah. I don't want to call him his sidekick, but he was Elijah's sidekick. He was his understudy. He came up under Elijah watching the great prophet Elijah do many great works. And it came to pass, 2 Kings, the story reads that when they were gone over, that Elijah says to Elisha, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And what was his response? Elisha said, I like this response. I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. All those mighty things that God used Elijah to do, the many miracles and victories and triumphs that Elijah went through, Elijah saw each and every one of them, and he asked Elisha, what do you want? What do you want from me? I want a double portion of your spirit. I want twice the power that you've, you've demonstrated. Amen. I mean, just how can you go wrong for asking for a double? Amen. <laughs> we can't be shy to ask for more. Amen. I, I'm, I know that I, I have that. This is something that I do, and that my son has picked up that habit. Ask for, you know, I've many times tell my son, hey, uh, Matt, I'm going to go get a burger. What do you want? Make it a double. Give me a double cheeseburger. Go get some ice cream. Make it a double scoop. What about pizza? Double slice. I'll take two. Right? I think one of the one of the best things I learned from a coworker was we were having pizza for lunch one day. Somebody bought us pizza, and I w- walked in. And everybody was just grabbing one slice. Everybody grabbing one slice, and coworker he went in. He grabbed two. He folded it in half, made a sandwich. He walked out. I said, "Man, look at that! Give me one of those. I'll take a double, double portion. I don't just want a simple coffee. Uh, give me a double espresso." Now they have triples and quadruples, and you could go to places that will give you six shots of espresso, and my Lord, it's real, and it's good, amen. Double portion. Elisha, what do you want? I want a double portion of your spirit upon me. Give me double. Give me, give me twice as much power as you have. I want to live in it. I want to display it. There's a powerful story that we read about Elisha and when he was with his servant. Elisha, the army of angels. And I could just hear Elisha telling the prophet Elijah, hey, you've done so many great things, but watch out, I'm about to, I'm about to do twice as much. Twice as much. A double portion of that anointing and power. This story takes place in 2 Kings 6, describes the mighty angels of God ready to protect the prophet Elisha and his servant. Bible describes a heavenly army of angels. Heavenly army of angels protecting Elisha and his servant from another earthly army. God provides an army of angels leading horses and chariots of fire to protect the prophet Elijah and his servant. And it comes a time when God opens the eyes of the servants. He opens the eyes of his servants so he could see the angelic army surrounding them. There was a city 
called ancient Aram is believed to be now now be called Syria. It was at war with Israel, battling against God's people. The king of Aram was disturbed by the fact that the prophet Elisha, he was able to predict where Aram's army was planning to go. Elisha had the insight. He had the double portion. Amen. Elisha, being a prophet of God, walked with God, would learn of the whereabouts of Aram's army and would pass that information along to Israel's kings in warnings so the king could plan the Israeli army strategy to avoid them. You just see the frustration on that king as he goes to destroy the Israelites. And he goes and they work and they toil and they go to that place where the Israelite army is supposed to be and they get there and they're not there. So Aram's king, he decides to send a large army, a group of soldiers, to the city of Dothan to capture Elisha so he wouldn't be able to help the Isra Israel win the war against his nation. The Bible describes what happens next. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force where Elisha and his servant were. They went by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant... Elisha's servant got up, went out early in the next morning. The Bible says that an army with horses and chariots were surrounding the city. Can you just see that servant's face on that morning when he goes out and sees the enemy surrounding him? My Lord. What should we do, Elisha? They got us surrounded, man. We're done. Being surrounded by a large army with no way to escape. Terrified. The servant, who at this point in the story could only see the earthly army that was there to capture Elisha. Elisha tells him, don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, Lord, open his eyes so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes. And when the servant went back and looked, he saw the hills full of horses, chariots of fire all around Elisha, surrounding that, that enemy army. Can you imagine looking out, seeing that heavenly host of angels in charge of the horses, chariots of fire, hallelujah, surrounding the hills, surrounding that enemy army, ready to protect, ready to protect, ready to protect Elisha and that servant. Through Elisha's prayer, his servant gained the ability to see not just the physical dimension but also the spiritual. Thank you, Jesus. His servant was not only able to see the physical, but he was able to see the spiritual. I believe that that's what God has in store for New Life Church. Amen. When we go out and we fulfill the commission, we will go out and fulfill this burden that pastor has and the vision. We may seem that Lord, it's just me. I'm small, God. There's a lot of people out here. The enemy is coming against me. No, just look out. God's got protection all around you. God's got protection all around you. Hallelujah. When you surrendered to him and you yielded to his will, God's protection came over your life. Can we just clap our hands and thank him right now? He's not going to leave us nor forsake us. He's going to empower us to get the job done. Somebody said amen. One of my other favorite characters in the Bible, King David. King David, amen. You could read through the Psalms of David. 
as many songs of praise that we sing today. You'll find that they're filled with praise and admiration for God. David knows that he's living in the protection of his Lord. He knows the scriptures which say, touch not mine anointed, do my prophets no harm. David knows about the protection of God over his life. He is the chosen one of God and walks with the protective hand of God against all of his enemies. I like Psalms 91, very powerful psalm in the Bible. It says, those who live in the shelter of the Most High God will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from every deadly disease. Somebody believe that today. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. If there's ever a message that we need in this day, in this hour, it's that one right there. We've got to get that word of God in our heart and believe that God's protection is over our lives. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come over your home. For he will order, this is the same psalm, by the way, Psalm 91, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you are, wherever you go, wherever you go, his angels are there. Hallelujah. His protection is there. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. God have mercy. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. Hallelujah. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. These are the promises of God over our life today. Hallelujah. He said, I will reward them with long life and give them my salvation. No matter the amount of power or wrath that David's enemies brought against him, they were no match for the protection of God over his life. Amen. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. David's life was in God's hands, and we see it in one of the most powerful stories in the Bible. David knows this, and he portrays it as he proclaims it in his battle against the uncircumcised Philistine. Goliath. Amen. First Samuel 17 says, Then David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Come on, O Goliath, you better do better than that. Hallelujah. I'm serving the most high God. His protection is over my life. Hallelujah. Come on, New Life Church. As we go out and we bring the gospel to the lost, we proclaim that Jesus is able to save and deliver. His protection is going to be upon us. We don't have to fear the enemy. We don't have to fear the devil. We don't have to fear the evilness that is in this world. But God's protection is over us wherever you go, wherever I go. 
He's going to empower us to get the job done. Amen? Be strong. Be of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that goes with thee. He will not fail thee. He won't forsake thee. He won't fail thee. Come on, say that today. He won't fail me. He won't forsake me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that it get into your heart and you begin to believe it like you've never believed it before. God's with me. Every day I wake up, every, every day I live, God's with me. His protection is over our life, New Life Church. Hebrews 13.5 says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord and thank him right now. Thank you, Jesus. I believe God has given New Life Church everything that we need to be victorious. It's up to you and I to receive it. It's up to you and I to surrender to his will. Hallelujah. It's up to you and I to take up this fight, fight the good fight, Paul said. What kind of weapons do we have at our disposal? What kind of weapons do we have? We have a shield of faith that we could carry. But that shield can only protect if it is picked up and used. Walk by faith, not by sight. A shield of faith. It is only through prayer and the Word of God, studying the Word of God, that we are assured of God's protection in our lives. And when we decide, I choose to put my life in God's hands, I choose to surrender to Him and live for Him, we can stand upon the Word of God and His promises and declare what it says in the Word. Romans 8.31 says, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, New Life Church, who can be against us? Romans 12.19 says, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. He's going to fight our battles, New Life Church. Hallelujah. We can live victorious. We can live this victorious life. Hallelujah. And be used of God in this hour. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm about finished right here. But begin to think about New Life Church, you and me, and as many that are out today. Begin to think where God brought us from and how God brought us to be in this place today. Many great victories, many great battles, many great struggles, many great times of shouting. But I'm thankful today that one day God, he spoke to a young couple placed a calling in their lives. What did they do with that calling? They surrendered to it. They said, Lord, if you can use anything, God, you could use me. Pastor and Sister Pritt left everything behind. They felt the call of God to come to California. God brought them to us to lead us in this time today. Amen. I believe that God is going to use them in a mighty way, but I also believe that he is calling New Life Church to step up. Last Sunday, 
What a beautiful service, communion, commission service that we had. And I listened to that message again that Pastor spoke. The title of his message was, in case you missed it, The World is Waiting. The world is waiting. What are they waiting for, Brother Matt? They're waiting to be rescued. There's lives that are torn by sin. There's, there's sin rampant all over the Bay Area. There, there's lives that are broken and lost and bound by addiction. What are they waiting for? They're waiting for a church to rise up in this hour and be used by God to set them free. Pastor went on to preach that the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers. God is calling laborers today. God is calling laborers today. Amen. God has made known his promise to New Life Church and has confirmed it more than once. New Life Church, we've made the commitment to see this thing through last Sunday in our commission service. Hallelujah. And I believe that just what Pastor began to preach, and he said it several times, and I've come to tell you today that the time is now. The time is now. The time is now. If I'm ever going to do anything for God, the time is now. We don't have much time left. The time is now to do a work for the Lord. The time is now. The time is now. That begin to ring in my heart and in my mind. The time. God's calling is now. It's If you haven't answered God's call, the time is now to do it. If you, you haven't committed your life to God, the time is now. Don't wait another minute. Don't wait another second. It may be too late. God's coming back for a church that have made themselves ready. The time is now to do what God has called you and I to do as we stand today. Hallelujah. God has called you and me to be here in this time right now. Hallelujah. And he's wanting to know, are you willing to commit? Are you willing to surrender? Not just, not just once, not just in a commission service, but a daily, daily, daily. Every day I wake up, Lord, every service I come in to your sanctuary, God, I've got to surrender to you all over again new and afresh, gracefully broken, Lord. If you can use anything, God, you can use me, Jesus. I'll be the one, Lord, to cry out. I'll be the one to pray. I'll be the one to fast. Lord, I'll be the one to get behind the man of God and the woman of God that you sent to San Leandro. I'll be the one to say, Pastor, I've got your back. I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me, Jesus.